Hello people, in this video we want to look at pigments, okay. These are nothing but colored substances pre uh, present in us, okay. So these colored substances from where they come, they can be either endogenous, that is we produce them or exogenous, they come from outside, okay. So we produce melanin, you're sure, yes. We produce um, hemosiderin, right, bilirubin we produce. All this you already know, correct? And and there are a lot of pigments that come from outside, like we inhale carbon, we ingest some pigments that cause our gyria, right? Like if you ingest sil silver or silver dust, it causes our gyria, it's a skin condition. Then we also put some tattoos on us and we bring some color into our body. So we have endogenous pigments and exogenous pigments. Whenever they ask you lung, right? Lung is brown in duration of lung that is hemosidrosis but brown atrophy of heart is lipofusin who understood who didn't understand let me explain again hemosidrosis you have brown in duration of lung lung is hemosidrin whereas heart brown atrophy of heart if they ask it will be lipofusin pigment okay so lipofusin you remember that it is a, a wear and tear pigment it comes with age Hemosiderosis, uh, that's hemosiderin, comes because of breakdown of hemoglobin, that is heme protein. Heme protein derived pigment. Did you understand what we are trying to say? In lung, it will be hemosiderin. In heart, it will be lipofusin. Now, let us just look at the, all the pigments, just the list, okay? Let us look at all the pigments. So, endogenous, you have melanin. Melanin is a very, very common pigment and uh, if there is excess or less of melanin, it is because of the defect in the tyrosine metabolism. So you must have heard of albinism where the entire body is very pale, vitiligo, where there are local patches, right? So melanin deficiency or melanin, uh, it can also, there can also be hyper pigmentation, right? There can be hyper or there can be hypo, right? So many things can happen. Melanin-like pigment you can see in alcaptonuria. This is a disorder where there is homogentisic acid urea. So there's going to be homogentisic acid in the urine. That's when the uh, urine is left to stand for some time, it becomes black. So that is alcaptonuria. Then you have the Dubin-Johnson syndrome here. Something to do with the liver. Excessive, uh, uh, what will you have? Melanin-like pigment in the cytoplasm. We are not going into details of that. Then you have the heme protein derived pigments, that is pigments that are coming from hemoglobin, that is the heme part of it, the heme protein derived pigments. You have hemosiderin, this is going to be brown actually, uh, this is going to be uh, stained with the pearls, a Prussian blue. Then you have acid hematin, acid hematin is also called as hemozoin, it's also called as malaria pigment. You must be aware of this, uh, malaria pigment hemozoin, correct? So. It is the plasmodium which is able to convert this heme into hemozoin, that's the acid hematin. Then you have the bilirubin which is uh, a breakdown product of uh, hemo, uh, heme, right? You already know this. When there is excess of bilirubin, what happens? There is jaundice, correct? Then you have forfirins because in the synthesis itself, if there is problem, then you will have forfirins. Lipofusin. Lipofusin is wear and tear pigment. It comes with age. Remember, it's a very important MCQ question. It is golden brown and it is actually going to be inside the lysosomes. It's an intralysosomal pigment. So is it very clear now, uh, all these endogenous pigments? Who can tell me all the endogenous pigments? Come on, try. Melanin. Melanin-like pigment. Hemo. Uh, protein derived pigments like hemosiderin, hemozoin, then uh, what was the third one? Uh, bilirubin, and then we had um, forfirin, and then we have lipofusin. Very good, very good. So now let us move on to exogenous pigments. Now, exogenous pigments, <clears throat> we have inhaled pigments like carbon, ingested pigments, silver, injected tattoo. Okay, that will be the India ink, like tattoo. Sometimes they do with henna, sometimes they do with India ink. So now we are done with all the pigments. So we will move on to the next slide guys, that is hemosiderosis. 
This is important for exam. You should know this is a hemoprotein derived pigment. Correct? It is coming from heme, heme protein. Correct? In this you have local and generalized hemosiderosis. This is hemosiderosis guys. Local hemosiderosis and there can be generalized hemosiderosis. Okay. So you have in local tissues, uh, you can have like if there is a hemorrhage in the local tissue, right? Black eye, you know black eye when some injury happens to the head, you can see then there will be periorbital hematoma. So that is localized hemosiderosis, brown induration of lung. This happens because when there is a left heart failure, the lung will not be able to send the blood back to the heart. That time the, there will be venous congestion, there is chronic venous congestion of the lung, CVC lung, because of which when there is pooling of blood in the lung, there can be hemosiderosis in the lung and that is called brown induration of lung. Okay, then infarction, whenever there is an infarct, there will be ischemia will lead to infarct and because of this, there will be, whenever there is a stasis of blood, because of the heme breakdown, you will have hemosiderosis. Am I telling correct? Because of iron, right? Excess iron. Yes. Then coming to the generalized hemosiderosis, you have uh, you have generalized hemosiderosis means what? Whole body you have more uh, iron deposit. Okay. Now why can that happen? That can happen because hereditarily this person is absorbing a lot of iron. Okay. Hereditary itself he is absorbing a lot of iron or he has in acquired condition, he received excess iron because of blood transfusions. He's like in thalassemia. Those people will be taking so much blood transfusion that the iron load will become more on the body. Then if they are taking parenteral iron excess, right, then also there can be hemosiderosis. And if the person is taking excess iron in dietary intake, now that time also there can be excess iron and uh, hemosiderosis, which will be generalized. How many people understood what we are trying to explain? Local you understood, local will be because of local hemorrhage or uh, CVC lung like left heart failure, then infarction that is because of ischemia, then <clears throat> black eye because of the, uh, if somebody hits the scalp there is periorbital hematoma because of which there will be hemosiderosis. Okay, so now let's get to the details. See iron is stored as ferritin or hemosiderin. Okay, so iron uh, whichever is excess, if it is excess it is stored as ferritin and aggregates of ferritin will become hemosiderin. That is interesting. Aggregates of ferritin becomes hemosiderin. You can identify this in the microscope. So this uh, hemosiderin will be golden yellow to brown. It is a granular pigment and it will be within the mononuclear phagocytes of the bone marrow, spleen, liver. Okay, so in the macrophages, in the phagocytes they will be there. Okay. So just pay some attention here. Again, it is a golden yellow to brown color pigment. It is a granular pigment. So basically, it is found inside the mononuclear phagocytes. Okay. Example in spleen, etc. where there is RBC breakdown, you will find it. The stain actually they used for uh, uh, hemocytrin is actually Prussian blue stain. Is that the way you pronounce it? Prussian blue stain. Okay. <clears throat> Just look at this. Uh, again, there is uh, localized hemosiderosis and general hemosiderosis. In general hemosiderosis, you will have parenchymal deposits and reticular endothelial deposits like in the spleen, bone marrow, liver, etc. So basically here there can be increased absorption blood transfusion, parenteral iron therapy, hemolytic anemias, you can mention so many hemolytic anemias, correct? Like uh, what? Like thalassemia, etc., right? Then you have excessive dietary intake. So all these are, um, I think we can wind up hemosiderosis. This is all we have to say about hemosiderosis as of now. See the CVC lung, right? In CVC lung, actually the Hemosiderin will be within the macrophage, that is the heart failure cells, okay. In the heart failure cells in the lungs, the heart failure cells are where? In the lung. They will contain the hemosiderin, okay. That will give the brown induration of lung. This is important for exam, actually. This just, this can come for uh, 
exam so look out for the cvc lung video okay so in this video we have looked at the pigments and we also looked at hemosiderosis right in the next video let us look at lipofuscin this is another prig pigment so whenever they give in the exam as brown atrophy of heart it will refer to lipofuscin so come back in the next video let us look at brown atrophy of heart and details about lipofuscin pigment okay say bye bye bye